Hello everybody, I am Jarrett Ross, a Genie Vlogger, and welcome back to another Professional Genealogist Reacts. On today's video, I will be watching DNA test, Venezuelan test results, Ancestry, Anti-SJW DNA test, Spanish sub, smiley face, smiley face. Um, this video is from El Moro de David. I, I assume that's the name. Um, my Spanish isn't necessarily good enough to quite know for sure. Hopefully, maybe it's, you know, El Moro de David. That's what I said. I don't know. If I got it right, comment down below. I'm not always the best with pronunciation, as many who watch this channel know. This video, I think, is going to be an interesting one. Uh, in part, I don't know, um, you know, what type of comments I'm going to get because of the anti-SJW DNA test part of the title. As many people know, when I make my titles, I just use the title of the video I'm reacting to along with you know, professional genealogist reacts and whatnot. I don't know how political this video is going to get. Personally, I try to just keep my own politics out of this, although if you look really hard enough, you'll probably find my actual politics, um, which is not always what a lot of people think, apparently, based on the many comments that I get all the time. Um, especially that Hodge Twins video I did recently. I can't believe the amount of comments I get from people where they think that I'm either super conservative or super liberal or what have you. So hopefully not too much of that in this, but being that it's Venezuelan DNA test results, I think it's going to be very interesting to see what are the results. I don't know a whole lot in terms of the history of Venezuela. Um, obviously, I think I'm going to be expecting a good amount of some sort of Iberian um, I can't remember if Venezuela was ruled by the Spanish or Portuguese or if it was one of those uh, sort of mixed type of uh, countries where part of it was ruled by one and then the other and whatnot. As I said, I don't really know the history of Venezuela that well, but I think it's going to be very interesting being that I, I have not personally worked with many Venezuelan DNA test results. Um, although I have worked with a lot of DNA test results that do trace to South America and Central America. But I'm really not going to talk a whole lot more. But before we do jump into the video, please be sure to give this a like. That really does help me out. Also, be sure to subscribe and click that bell for notifications on future videos. With all of that fun stuff said, uh, let's go ahead and jump right into the video. I'm going to speak about my DNA test and um, wait a second before you <laughs> click off I want to tell you more about my previous DNA test I actually made a video on my channel uh, like five months ago hmm. uh, and it was in Spanish but this time I want to talk in English with you guys because okay. this is really interesting you'll see um, I have watched countless of videos um, talking about this issue and every single one of those videos is just the same thing for me people somehow they feel special when they talk about their DNA 95% European I don't know if anyone else gets upset about that but I don't enjoy it Doctor was just an example that I watch from a no bullshit channel. You should watch that channel. It's really interesting, actually. But the thing is that it's not that I wasn't the only one. There is actually another girl who was upset that she was white. Uh, what? Are you trying to tell me I'm white? I'm so confused. And by the way, the definition of white people is really weird. I do remember that a person, uh, this person who happened to be Mexican and all that, uh, he told me that, oh, where are you from? Because he couldn't identify where my accent was, you know, back then. So I told him that I was from Venezuela. And he told me, oh, so you're a Latino. I'm so sorry, I thought that you were white and just like, why are you sorry? Is that a bad thing, being white? Do you know that white Latinos are actually a thing in the United States? In this video, I'm going to explain that they have updated my results. Some of the original results are actually very different right now. Let me explain a little bit because 
in the past, uh, I used to have like this big green plug from Canada to Argentina. It, it was a, it was a, just a really big green plug where they were telling me that most of my blog, like 27% of my blog, uh, belong to that region, like where indigenous pe people used to live in. So, yeah, that wasn't really helpful. It's <laughs> just like this a big green block, that's it. Yeah, it's very vague. And that, that's the thing that everybody hopes as these update more and more is. They learn more about the DNA, they're able to pinpoint certain sequences to more specific populations, and then those more vague areas will slowly become more finite and more specific. It wasn't really helpful. And they also said that my blood was, was mostly European, but mostly it, it was French. So. That was interesting. It says hmm. that we recently added more ethnicity populations and communities based on this update. You yeah. might see okay, so this is from January 4th, 2020. So there have been even more updates since then. In fact, I think this was before they did the really big uh, communities update. Um, or this might have been right when they did the... Oh, yeah, it says it in their communities. So this might have been, I think, the first communities update, maybe, or the first big one. Um, but it's been updated since then, so if he logs in again, it'll probably be different. Changes to your results, and your DNA doesn't change, or, or science does. So, yeah, they're basically explaining what they did here. Let's go to the point here. So, yeah, now it's different. As you can yeah, see that's here, a... this was just a really big green block, and that's it. Uh, also, there was a really small blue block, like this one, but... That was it. I mean, yeah. <laughs> they were explaining a lot about my origins when it comes to my uh, ancestry you know, <laughs> in, in that region. But let me tell you a little bit. You know, my great grandmother from my father's side, she was in, she was uh, Indian uh, or Native American. Uh, she was a direct descendant from Cariña people, or also we call it Kalina. Kalina in English, I think so. Yeah, she hmm. was a direct descendant from that. So, yeah, it, it, these it, these people were actually very prevalent here. You see this green block. They were really prevalent there, and also hmm. here, the, the, this blue region. So, I assume that they were, they, that is why these two regions are so big here. They represent like 23% of my DNA. Which would be equivalent to a grandparent. Um, and I think that's what he said. It was a grandparent of his or maybe I missed it, it was a great grandparent. But still, 23% would be equivalent to a grandparent, assuming it all comes from one ancestor. But I can say that this is actually something that I think makes more sense now. They have updated the results, and I can yeah. say that now I understand the results better. And I know that my family history, when it comes to my great grandmother, and okay, it was great grandmother here. Also, let me tell you that my family, my my father's side and my mother's side, they've been here in Venezuela for more than one half a century, as far as I know. That's okay. a lot, you know. I think my... So, I, one... Or wait, did he say one and a half century? So, 150 years? That would be the equivalent of going back to, like, his uh, second or third great-grandparents about... Assuming that he's my age and the generational gaps between my family and his are about similar, um, I think that'd be about 30, 35 years a generation or so. Um, so, yeah, so... That's pretty far back to have, you know, all Venezuelan, but it does make sense with his um, tapestry of ancestral percentages. Um, I mean, he's literally all over the world. And in the results that I've seen from other people from uh, different areas of South America and in, um, you know, Central America and even in the Caribbean, this is what you see. It's this huge tapestry where it's you get mixes of European, mixes of Native American, mixes of African, um, and it really goes to show the history of those areas is a truly mixed population. My great great grandparents came from Europe as well, and some of them were indigenous, 
if I'm not mistaken as well. But it's very it's very difficult for me to say because I don't have enough data to prove that. Yeah, I don't know what the genealogy uh, possibility or the genealogical possibilities are in Venezuela. Basically, meaning what records are available and accessible. Um, because if he's not able to trace his family tree confidently using a paper trail, it doesn't even necessarily matter about his DNA matches. Um, you know, while they'll be interesting, he won't be able to place any of them in terms of how they're related if the paper trail isn't strong enough, um, which is a major issue for a lot of population groups, even in my own coming from a Jewish ancestry. The records really aren't there for a lot of uh, stuff, especially before immigration to the U.S. or basically immigration out of the pale. So for a lot of Jewish families such as mine, the paper trail usually goes cold right around, you know, the late 1800s. Um, so that could be a very similar case for him as well, where he just can't trace it that far back enough to be confident in where it all is coming from. According to this, uh, most of the African blood that I have uh, in, my, in my results uh, are, is from, sorry, is from Cameroon, Congo, and Southern Bantu peoples. And uh, we also have like Nigeria, um, Northern Africa, Senegal, and Mali. Yes, Mali. And I think Mali yeah. represents. Mali. And a ton of trace percentages, a ton of them, which really isn't that surprising either when you have this much of a of a mixture of all these different ancestries. It gets even harder with the trace results because I imagine some of these trace results probably are true. And then, of course, some of them probably aren't true. And then it's a matter of can you decipher which ones are more likely and which ones are less likely? You know, which are the more confident ones that you can say, yeah, I'm pretty sure I have that. So, yeah, basically, Africa represents like 11 percent. Which that'd be the equivalent of about a great grandparent. So assuming it all comes from one ancestor, if he was able to do his family tree tracing back to all of his great grandparents, we would expect possibly one African ancestor. Um, of course, it could be multiple more distant ancestors of African ancestry in different sides of his family, which is very possible, especially being the fact that his African ancestry readings are seemingly all over Africa, mostly Western Africa, which makes a lot of sense in the history of most slaves uh, or most Africans who were enslaved and taken to the Americas came from West Africa. Um, but, you know, being that it seems like that's a you know, it's mixed between a lot of different population groups in Africa. I think it's more likely going to be multiple different or multiple distant ancestors than necessarily one close one, but it could be one close, you know, great grandparent or a second great grandparent or something. But yeah. Basically the same thing as before. So yeah, I, I, I have talked with some of my uh, relatives. Uh, we don't have a. Uh, uh, black relatives, uh, direct black relatives, but I, my grandpa, he told me that for sure that he knew that one of his ancestors was black, though it's very difficult, like I said, it's very, very difficult because from my, my great grandparents don't have a lot of information. Here is very difficult. It's not like in yeah. America you can say that. Oh yeah, my my great grandparents came from Sweden and all that. No, it's not like that here, and guys. It's very difficult for me to say that. So I guess it's possible actually. So it's really interesting. I'm very proud of my Afri African origins. It's really it's really special because it's part of a culture as well. And then we go to Europe. As you can see, Europe, it's just like this big melting pot as well. Yeah. But it, it's even bigger. Oh my gosh. It's, there, there are a lot of things that are really interesting. And France, it's still, it, it's still the, the biggest 22%. It's less than before, by the way. Before, it was like 30, 32%, I guess. Not yeah, with a lot of people or the, a lot of the population groups in France, there's just been so much migration in and out um, to different areas that France is one that can be very difficult. Often some companies will lump it into French and German together. Some companies separate it out now, such as Ancestry. Um, they're a bit more confident in it. 
But often when there are updates and stuff, I, I often see people that have like French or German or the French and German ancestry or most European ancestry in general. There's usually like the, it, it changes a bit either way in, um, sometimes. So I'm not surprised that it went down. Uh, it probably just means that they were much more confident in identifying places other than France for it. So maybe some of that French before is now part of that Portuguese and Spanish or the English Wales, Northwestern Europe or Ireland and Scot or even the Germanic Europe. We also have Portugal, it's bigger now, and Spain. I guess when it comes to Spain, Portugal, it's just makes, it just, for me, it makes sense, you know? Yeah. Portugal, Spain, here in Venezuela, they had a really big impact in our culture. So my grandma, uh, from my mother's side, she told me that her great-grandparents came from Spain, the Canary Islands, if I'm not mistaken. Hmm. That's what she told me. So yeah, that's it, guys. I hope that this was a very different video for you. I hope that you like it because I try to make this video a little bit different from other DNA videos that I have watched in the past. So I hope that no bullshit, you know, that channel that inspired me to make this video uh, watches this video in the future. And <laughs> I hope that he likes it. I tried to be not really, eh, eh. I, I tried not to have that kind of attitude, you know, like SGW attitude. That's the way to say it. Forget my English, sorry. <laughs> hope to see you again in another video, in another video, in another video in the future. So see you. Bye bye. Oh, that, that music at the end was a little intense. Um, I think that was a pretty great video. I, um, you know, he, he understood what was going on with the DNA. He had a pretty good understanding of, you know, his family as best as he could, especially considering from what he said, there wasn't much information, which I, I think is basically him saying there's not much available documentation, um, or at least it's Venezuelan genealogy may be extremely difficult, but it may be possible. I don't know. I don't have enough experience with the Venezuelan uh, records. One thing that would be interesting for him to, to consider is doing both a Y DNA test and a mitochondrial DNA test, because with such a major mix of different ancestries, by taking a Y DNA test and a mitochondrial DNA test, he can get a much better idea of at least his purely paternal line. Where is that coming from? Where would he be able to trace that back to? And his purely maternal line, where would he be able to trace that back to? So as an example, if for whatever reason it turns out that that African ancestor of his is, you know, his third or fourth great grandfather, but it's like, you know, his father's 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 father or whatever, then we would see that in Y-DNA. He would take a Y-DNA test and get a haplogroup that would be typical of people of African ancestry. Um, same thing if he did a Y-DNA test, he might get it back where it says it's Native American, and then he knows going up his purely paternal line will be Native American. Um, or, you know, it could be anything really, but it, it gives you that specific for that one line. And then for mitochondrial, that's specific for the mother's line, the mother's 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 mother and so on. So by testing that, he could get an idea of if I trace up my purely maternal line, what would I expect that line to trace back to what area? I imagine I didn't watch his first video because it was all in Spanish. Um, I don't even, I imagine the title is probably all in Spanish as well. Uh, it seems like most of his videos are mostly in Spanish, but um, he does have some in English. He has pretty good English, but overall very interesting, and it would be cool to see a family tree for him, although I imagine it is, as he says, very difficult to get any information. Well, thank you so much for checking out this video. I do hope that you enjoyed. If you did, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. That really does help me out. If you'd like to get access to my content early or even get access to exclusive content, please be sure to become a patron of mine on Patreon. And not only will you get access to all that fun content, but you'll also be helping in supporting my channel. You can also click right about here if you'd like to subscribe. It is completely free to do so. You can also follow me on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram at Genie Vlogger. I'm the Genie Vlogger. See you in my next video.